If World War III had started in 1975, this is what people would have heard on BBC Radio. This is the wartime broadcasting service. This country has been attacked with nuclear weapons. Communications have been severely disrupted, and the number of casualties and the extent of the damage are not yet known. Peter Donaldson. This script is part of a series of secret documents released today. The historian Peter Hennessy. The BBC, we now know thanks to this extraordinary part of war book that was just been declassified, was built in throughout the escalation period. And the BBC would have been given 48 hours notice by the central government to be ready for the switch to the wartime broadcasting service. Everything would have been reduced to a single radio channel. Television would have stopped completely. We shall bring you further information as soon as possible. Meanwhile, stay tuned to this wavelength, stay calm, and stay in your own house. The government war book laid out plans to secure the country in the event of nuclear war. The full document is still classified, but a detailed list of contents is now public. The 15 chapters cover all areas. The first, entitled The Machinery of Government. Professor Hennessy again. Parliament has the Emergency Powers Defence Bill rushed through in a matter of hours in the last moments of peace, which gives the state absolute powers over life, limb, property. This was drafted just after the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the people who drafted it acknowledged the fact that, that it was far more draconian than any of the powers taken in the Second World War by the British state. But it was so horrifying that you could not risk doing it in time of peace, so that's rushed through at the last minute. And at the very last moment, the alternative centre of government wartime headquarters, the bunker under the Cotswolds, is got ready. And the last bit is the manning of that by the Prime Minister and the War Cabinet and the backup. The state would take over everything. Food, hospitals, manpower, communications, transport. Aliens were to be detained, as were those termed subversive. Almost all the categories listed are deeply chilling. Discharging patients from hospitals, putting police on a war footing. And then... There's item 5.16, removal of major art treasures from London and Edinburgh. At the last minute, you're going to get the art treasures out of Edinburgh and London. And the art treasures from London would have gone into a quarry in Wiltshire, not very far from the War Cabinet bunker, or to the quarry, the slate quarry, in Blanifestiniog, where they went in World War II. And so the British state, in its meticulous way, had even planned to get the National Portrait Gallery and the National Gallery treasures somehow along a crowded A4 in these old um, furniture lorries. Extraordinary. Very British. By the mid-1970s, the number of Soviet nuclear warheads targeted on the UK meant no place in Britain would be safe, except the deep shelters. There was no plan to evacuate civilians. Remember, there's nothing to be gained by trying to get away. By leaving your homes, you could be exposing yourselves to greater danger. If you leave, you may find yourselves without food, without water, without accommodation, and without protection. Peter Donaldson really was the voice of the wartime broadcasting service. He pre-recorded a similar announcement in the 1980s. It was all very hush-hush, and I can't remember exactly what I read, but it was similar but obviously I wasn't allowed to keep the pieces of paper uh, on which the writing was. And it, it felt really spooky. Here I was talking about the end of the world as we know it. The war book was only abandoned after 1989. There are still, of course, plans in place for a major terrorist attack. But that's nothing like the nuclear holocaust, where it was assumed 12 million people in Britain would be killed instantly, 4 million seriously injured, the rest subject to radiation. Professor Peter Hennessy again. These were the crown jewels of genuine official secrecy, justifiable official secrecy, because you, you didn't want the other side to get your war plans. And also the degree of alarm for the civilian population in relatively tranquil times that a leakage of this uh, would have produced would have been extraordinary, quite extraordinary. So I was always an open government man, still am an open government man, but this is the sort of stuff the state has to keep back. We shall be on the air every hour on the hour. Stay tuned to this wavelength but switch your radios off now to save your batteries. That is the end of this broadcast.